Um, I'm Ushala Adler Thomas, and I work as an advisor for Capital Horizons. It's a not-for-profit company um, that helps other charities. And I'm just going to get my slides right so they see all of it together, instead of having to flip through it. Um, we, we work as a, a not-for-profit, and we support other organizations who are um, in need of some um, basic support to become more effective organizations. Um, our approach is very much that of a small organization which has got uh, 50 or so volunteers, and I say volunteers because people like myself have a day job, but we also give our time and uh, quite a lot of voluntary time to develop materials and to work with the organization to support um, some of the consortia that you're talking about. And in this instance, we've been um, in partnership with uh, INASP to deliver um, sort of a, a support program for four, and, uh, four consortia in Africa, and I'll tell you a bit more about them. But just to say um, that in terms of us being small and um, well-formed, um, I think it's very much it with the ethos that actually a small group of people can make a big difference. And for us, that's really, really important. So we're not there about making sort of big, large numbers or trying to be a high-flying consultancies. We are there about real impact for people at the grassroots. And we concentrate on leadership, strategy, and influence. And we have lots of open source information that we put on our website. We got thought leaders who talk about collaboration. We develop uh, one-day programs, two-day programs that, again, we put on our website so that anybody, any of you could just go there and pull them down and use them for yourselves. Um, we've got some high-level champions. So on the top uh, left of you, you can see Charles Handy. Um, he's many of you will know, sort of a top management guru. And he's been extremely sort of supportive of the thinking that we're doing. And I think it's partly because he really believes in the concept that we engaged in, which is that you know people like ourselves who got skills in our day job can share them for a greater good. And that's been really inspirational to have people like him. And he's sitting there with our chief exec, Ian Williams, who's also another inspirational person. But that story for another time. And on the bottom, on the um, uh, right there, are uh, a group of the sort of advisors that we mentioned to you. Um, I guess you could ask, I think I was asked to say what my personal motivation was for being engaged in this work. Um, I was born in Kenya, so there's, uh, and I came to Britain when I was 12. I had a huge amount of opportunities by being in Britain and a huge amount of resources. And I suppose for me, it's about giving back something at a time of my life that I can actually give something back. But I always say that I actually get more out of it than I give. <laughs> and I mean that, not because I'm trying to be humble or hu uh, express humility. Although I do feel both of that in terms of doing this work, and I feel quite emotional about it as well. Because I think what I experience when I go and do the training or development or engage with the consortia or other pieces of work that they're doing, is that you go to a venue where you want to have light sometimes because power's gone. Uh, there's noise of the generators behind the uh, the sort of wars over there, uh, you might not get water, it's very hot, compared to this luxurious sort of environment that we are working in. The limits of the resources that people like the consortia experience is just so stark that I feel really humbled that you know the small amount of contributions that we can make. So big thanks to uh, INAS for letting people like me do this sort of work. And leadership and learning are, in, are inseparable, so you know, how do you separate the two? Um, one of the things that, in terms of uh, our sort of approach, again, is that we know that leadership is simple, and there are millions and millions of um, uh, definitions that we all have dear to us, and we hang on to them. But we also know that it's not easy, that it's not easy to actually behave and act in a way that is demonstrating good leadership. And so I guess partly our thinking is that in the, the new future that we are facing, which is going to be very volatile, very uncertain, ever-changing, and it's just going to get worse. <laughs> and we've got so many examples around for all of us to, to reflect on that, that we actually have to learn differently, think differently, and definitely act differently. But to try and enable to do that isn't easy either. So um, our approach is very much about trying to make leadership simple, because um, I think at the last count, we counted that there were about 36,000 books with, written on leadership, and how you ever get your head around it. I'm not quite sure, but so one of our thinking is that we've got to try and make it simple. We've got to try and make it experiential because quite a lot of the methodology of sort of talking and chalk, with chalk and talk is we know it doesn't work. 
So trying to make that shift in the room around what leadership means to me personally in terms of my heart and mind is very much an approach that we try and take. And we also try and make it fun. So fun and visual as well. So in terms of making it simple and fun, uh, one of the things that we did in terms of working with the four consortia in Africa, um, we tried to develop a framework for what leading in the library meant. Because for the librarians, as they've articulated themselves, it's quite a big challenge. There's financial challenge, there's one about isolation, there's one about resources or people not valuing them. And you really hear those stories when you're there. Um, we felt that there's sort of some sort of visual which actually brought them all together as, as the four consortia would be really interesting. And so we developed that and we've got colleagues here who can talk a lot more about it, but I just wanted to put it past you and I think it's on the website probably as well. Um, and I just wanted to tell you a bit of two stories really. One is that last March I went to Uganda with a team of uh, three colleagues. One of them was from Inats, Kana, Vanessa's there. And we worked with um, COOL, the consortia for Ugandan librarians. And again, we tried to um, bring the strategy work that they had done previously to life for them. And we engaged them in the work of strategy development because we actually felt that in terms of their isolated positions across Uganda, in terms of the challenges that they were facing, working collectively towards a sort of a common vision and a common aim and a common mission and also understanding well, what the, were their priorities because there was not consensus about what the priorities were, was actually going to help them to be much more powerful <coughs> as a group than if they were acting individually. So we went to help them to uh, consolidate the sort of work that they had done around their strategy and we did lots around communication, lots around trying to get them to sell what they thought their brand was in terms of what the strategy meant to them. And in fact, we've got um, uh, the final sort of module happening just today, starting today. And two other colleagues have gone there to again work on the strategy and to make it live and real for them. Um, and we do experiential things. So actually, they were learning how to think differently there. So you know, we gave them a puzzle, which was just making them think differently because th that puzzle was not going to work with the, the rules that you normally use for puzzles. And I won't give the game away in case you come to one of our courses. <laughs> But, but it was challenging, but what they really enjoyed was that it was fun, it was experiential, and they had to really work at it. We weren't giving them the answers, they had to arrive at the answers. I'd like to uh, talk about Kharlik, because um, this is the work that we did in uh, Ghana, and uh, it's where Margaret has just set, set the stage for me. And I really, really love talking about this, because I think it's fascinating that a group of people that we engage on the process of developing their strategy should come up with a symbol, which is their symbol. And I know it's a sort of national um, uh, symbol as well, so there are probably limits to how it can be used. But they actually came up with the, the sea eagle as the animal that they would see their consortia to be. And I thought that it was really, really interesting because in a way what they were saying was that they wanted to create a sea change. And I thought um, how often I worked on strategy back here and how limited the visions have been and how much energy just went into wanting to create a symbol or a, a mechanism for creating a really <coughs> strong narrative about what it was that they wanted to do. <coughs> so it was about, you know, it also using the word C, which, which I won't read out to you because I'm supposed to wrap up. <laughs> um, and I think uh, um, for us it's inspiring leadership for a, a more sustainable future. And we believe that we do our best when we are really good at something and that we'd like to invite people like you who are out there in the audience who might want to use your golden seed to join us in whatever way you like, uh, contact us. And finally, if you want to know more about the work we've been doing with INASP and the consortia, Kamal's blog is really, really enlightening. I won't point you to all the different documents, but if anything, just read that one because you enjoy it. And Kamal's a poet when he writes. He just writes so beautifully. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. That's great.